welcome to The Conscious Investor. Let's get started. so excited to have Todd Smith this week as my featured guest. And man, if you didn't hear, you know, what he does and just kind of the mechanics, nuts and bolts of who he is and what he does up in Toronto, Canada, then go back to the previous episode and dial in on that. Um, But right now, I really asked Todd, I said, Todd, I really want to know what you are consciously pursuing. And if you're listening, if you listen to the first episode, you already know that he's super intentional about everything that he does, but I wanted to be super intentional as well about asking that question. So Todd, what are some things that you are, you know, very intentious, intentionally consciously pursuing in business or life? Okay. Wow. So there's a few directions we could go, I guess. I think maybe to continue where we left off in the last segment with this particular project that we're working on, um, what we're really trying to do there is create something that adds to the community that we're active in. And so to build on that, we're looking for other opportunities in that community. So as a, as a more of an incremental developer, like these projects are fairly small. Like the one that we're doing right now is, is eight units in a kind of a duplex format. And so the next one might be something similar, or I would say we'll probably always max out at 20 or maybe 30 units or something like that. If we're doing kind of a multifamily or mixed use sort of, project. So the the idea is, okay, well, what what else can we do in this town that would build on what we're already doing? So, you know, we have a lot of relationships in place with uh, town planners and people in the community and those sorts of things. So obviously we want to try and maximize those for just making it easier for us and everyone else because we know how we work together. But the idea now is to see, you know, what else can we do? What else, what other kind of uh, infill lots or What other kinds of projects can we work on that will fit into their master plan for the town that will allow people to, you know, have more walkable options? Um, This is a this is a community that's over the last 20 years had a lot of um, kind of downsizing 55 plus type residents move in. So we're thinking about how do we how do we design something that's going to really work for them in their in their uh, kind of downsizing years? And what else can we do to tie in with existing things that are happening that serve that community? So, and and I guess part of that too is when when I'm thinking about, you know, say working on a main drag in a town, if we could find something close to, like we're trying to be within a kilometer or so of the the main kind of old village. And um, so part of that is, is realizing that when we add density around those areas, it just gets more people into that downtown area, which then just encourages more local shops and gives our local entrepreneurs a chance to do something maybe uh, a little differently because they're serving more people who have more diverse needs. So we're, we're thinking, you know, how can our work in developing primarily residential contribute to the flourishing of that entire street? So somebody else can benefit from the, the new, the, the newly added uh, diversity and density of people. And then I think maybe the last thing that we're trying to figure out in a smaller context is, you know, how do we move beyond just kind of like, a, you know, creating, creating a great place physically to live, but also, and, and how can we contribute economically to a community? But, uh, you know, how do we tie in some sort of uh, care for residents that maybe just goes beyond the norm? And so I'm a Christian. And so my part of my part of the thing we're trying to figure out here is how do we serve and love and bless these people? because that comes out of the Christian ethic. And, you know, even if there's no immediate payback for us, and I think when, when we, we approach service like that, then there will be some sort of payback. And it may not be necessarily financial, but it may be. And I think we've seen in larger, um, larger complexes, groups like Apartment Life, when they focus on really serving their residents, there is actually a financial benefit for a, an operator. So we're trying to figure out how to do that at kind of a smaller, maybe more disparate scale. And we haven't quite got there yet. I haven't figured out how to do it, but that's one thing we're actively pursuing. That's, there's, oh my gosh, there are like 10 things there that I want to touch on. (laughs) This is, it's so incredible when you, okay. So going back to just the the movement of, you know, those who are downsizing and moving into these city areas, um, 
being able to meet their needs, even with what you're talking about by adding duplexes and having, you know, something that is more single level, single story, so they can be integrated in. But how often do we really contemplate what the ripple effect of re reigniting or infusing a neighborhood with a new demographic? And to bring that into the demographic, and you were explaining some of those ripple effects, and it's extraordinary. And you, I mean, I didn't even think about the economic implication of, you know, that small business that now, oh, well, you know what, maybe I'm going to offer this service, or I'm going to create this product, because now I have these, you know, these customers that are going to be coming in. That's extraordinary. <laughs> yeah, like this is, I think, one of the things about incremental developers or placemakers is, uh, and this is nothing new to me. This is all kind of on the shoulders of lots of people who've done work in this area or thought a lot about this, but the kind of the knock on effects when, when you start thinking about how can, how can we kind of beautify, add to, work with, develop what's already here, um, it just it, it kind of starts to gather a moment, momentum. There's a guy who I really respect. His name is John Marsh, and he, uh, he operates, I think, it, the town is called Opelika, Alabama. And so they started with like one little house. And over the course of a number of years, it took them a long time. I think they basically have rehabilitated about 10 city blocks in the core of town. But in doing that, they've learned a lot of lessons along the way about how the whole town is basically revitalized, the commercial strips, uh, just more people get more active once they see things um, being done. Someone's taking care of, they're being creative, they're using their, their creative resourcefulness to, to bless people in this neighborhood. It just brings on more activity from everybody. So you get a greater momentum. So he'd be one guy to really check out if you're interested in this topic. Um, I think it's the Marsh Collective is the name of their company and they do some pretty incredible work. I think after we spoke one day, I checked it out and it was really incredible. I was blown away. Um, yeah. Absolutely amazing. Now I'm, you and I have a shared faith, you know, the shared Christian faith and it's, it isn't a one-to-one -one dollars and cents or the exchange is never, a, it's, it's just, this is what we're called to do. And this is how we serve, you know, the world and how we love the world. Um, and so as you're pursuing, and some people might not be familiar with apartment life and I might, I don't want to botch it. So fill in any gaps that I don't do, but you know, the, the purpose of apartment life is to go in and just, um, nurture and support residents of communities, um, specifically apartment communities so that they can, you know, live fulfilled lives. And, you know, there is an underlying current of, you know, I think to say experience faith. Yeah, so I think what they do, their primary, their primary purpose is just to be there for residents, provide service, care, check-in, regular events, these sorts of things. But of course, as we all know, people in the various, in the vicissitudes of life go through challenges, crisis, mm -hmm. um, you know, family problems, like any of these sorts of things that you know, giving a break on rent or having a party just doesn't cut it. So these, these people are there to hear them out, to listen, to help both practically, but help also if there are, if there are spiritual needs, if there are questions that kind of transcend, um, how am I going to get this problem solved? And so they're there to, to resource on both a kind of a practical level as well as a spiritual level. That's really neat. So when you think because you are a very thoughtful person. I know this about you. So as you are, you know, looking at how to incorporate some of those concepts into your smaller, you know, projects, what are some of the ideas that you've been toying with? Well, one of the things we've been thinking about is, um, you know, how can, we, how can we partner with a local church just to have someone check in regularly or, you know, make people aware of the fact that there is, say, counseling available or things like that. And, you know, as you probably know, the, you know, Christianity isn't about some sort of coercive approach to, to talking to people. It's very much, it's just very much being involved in caring for people. And out of that, out of that, people then respond. So this is an, this, the whole idea isn't like proselytization, but as you mentioned earlier, serving out of a place of love, that's the same way that, that, um, you know, God calls us to. So we're trying to, we're looking at something like that. We're also looking at, you know, if we can get enough units in this, in this, in a concentrated area, then perhaps we can start having, say, um, you know, either joint events or com uh, combining some joint opportunities for all these, these uh, communities to interact somehow or be connected somehow so that there's a sense of, a, you know, more than just I live in my, my unit of my house, or maybe I might see my neighbor 
when I, when I go out to jump in my car or go for a walk or something like that. So we're kind of at the early stages of trying to figure this out. I'm, I'm going, to, I'm enthusiastically already following this part of your adventure. Uh, I think connection is so pivotal for the human experience. And with as much diversity as there is in the world right now, especially at this point in history, I just, I've come to the point of saying, you know what, the bottom line is we're human. Like, mm. let's, just, let's just love, love each other as humans. Let's just like, yeah. you know, serve each other and support each other. And I love that, you know, that concept of connecting people, regardless of you live on this block and you live over here a block and a half over, which isn't, you know, it's still a block and a half, depending on the city, you know, bringing those type of people together. There's a point of connection because especially in the, um, environment that you are describing you do I mean there's so much walking you bump into those people you know multiple times you know in any given week so yeah so as you say like if somebody if we are say we are able to do an event even if they live in different buildings they might see each other going to the local coffee shop or popping into the butcher or sitting on a bench on the street hanging out whatever so if we can foster connections and just a, a sense of you know especially in COVID era where there's been so much atomization having people connect physically and like in person more often is, is a good thing. Like we, we, uh, you know, we're designed to have that kind of connection. So if we can facilitate that, we certainly want to do it. I love it. Wow. Thank you so much, Todd, for coming on and just giving us a little bit of insight on, you know, just what you are intentionally pursuing at this time. And just a recap as to where are people going to connect with you? Best place. Yeah. Find me on LinkedIn. And just search uh, for Todd Smith. Um, and then you can also go to our website, which is DEPT356.com. Awesome. All right. Until next time, live big, love bigger. Overwhelmed by apartment syndication but want to learn more? Let me help you press the easy button. Head over to 3keysinvestments.com and download Syndication Made Simple. I explain simply how the process works, who's involved, and how you can get started today. You're smart, and with this simple guide, you'll be able to understand the process. Head over to 3keysinvestments.com and download Syndication Made Simple.